planet Earth is unique. An immense ball of rock, 25,000 miles around. It is a refuge. One-third land, two-thirds water, and with an atmosphere rich in oxygen, it is the only known home in the universe for living creatures. But this blue-green oasis has not always been so welcoming. The planet bears the scars of a traumatic past. A past of extreme environments and extreme catastrophes. Over the course of nearly five billion years, it has been a changing world. A world of fire. A world of ice. One of raging seas and poisonous skies. The life forms that now cling to its surface are the lucky survivors of a succession of deadly mass extinctions. For just over 200 years, determined scientists have explored the planet and unearthed its secrets. Their remarkable discoveries have led them to tell an incredible story. For thousands of years, humans had no knowledge of the true age and origin of the world. But just over 200 years ago, all this would change. Scotland, the Edinburgh coast. It was here, one day in 1788, that the discovery of a small rocky outcrop would completely rewrite the history of the Earth. Geologist Geoffrey Bolton is on his way to the desolate Sicker Point, where this discovery was made by a maverick Scottish farmer, James Hutton. Hutton was to become the father of modern geology. Hutton was a man who was enthusiastic in the pursuit of truth, a very inquiring mind. When he took over his father's farm, he saw underneath the soils rocks and wondered what these were. Hutton spent years obsessed with understanding how the rocks of the earth were made. His intrepid field expeditions took him all over Scotland, and they led him to realize that extremely slow processes could create the rocks he saw from layers of sediment. He rode miles and miles on his horse to go places where he thought he could find exciting geological experiences, even though he suffered terribly from saddle sores. Hutton concluded that rocks could take hundreds of thousands of years to form, but his claims were speculative, and his radical ideas flew in the face of the accepted version of Earth history, provided by the Church. For generations, the Christian Church had been the sole authority on all creation, based on the book of Genesis. And using the biblical genealogies, church leaders were now confidently claiming they knew the exact age of the earth itself. Archbishop Usher in the 17th century had calculated that the earth was 6,000 years old and indeed he calculated that it was made on October the 14th in the afternoon. Hutton was convinced that the earth had to be much older and when his explorations led him to Sicker Point in 1788 he would finally find the proof he was looking for in the unusual formation he discovered. These rocks are not just any old rocks, they're very special rocks. And the reason they're special is because of the story Hutton was able to tell from them. Here, two layered rock formations stand at right angles to each other. He knew these rocks had once been laid down horizontally on the sea floor. They must then have been buried under great depth to recrystallize. They must then have been tilted on end by great earth forces. Then they were eroded away and truncated. Then these rocks were deposited on top. And he realized that that would not take hundreds of years, nor thousands of years, but many millions of years. Hutton's discovery was a turning point. From that day forward, it was rock, not scripture, that would become the trusted guide to the distant past. And over the next two centuries, the study of rocks around the globe would lead to the awesome revelation 
that this blue-green planet has been on the most astounding journey. A journey that began in a world of fire. The man who first proposed this hellish origin for the planet was the Victorian scientist Lord Kelvin. A British expert in thermodynamics, Kelvin believed that the Earth was slowly cooling down. The fires of the planet's interior, visible in volcanic eruptions, suggested to him that the planet had once been completely molten. Kelvin used thermodynamics to calculate a new age for the Earth. He reasoned that the molten planet would need nearly 20 million years to cool to its present temperatures. Kelvin was correct about the Earth being molten, but not about its age. His figure was a colossal underestimate. Like all 19th century scientists, Kelvin was unaware of a key source of heat inside the early Earth that prevented the planet from cooling as he predicted. Radioactivity. In the early Earth, radioactive particles of uranium, thorium and potassium were in huge abundance. The heat produced from the decay of these particles would keep the Earth extremely hot for an extremely long time. But although these particles confounded Kelvin's calculations, they would eventually prove the keys to unlocking the true age of the Earth. In the 20th century, rare particles of surviving radioactive uranium were collected together to create the first atomic weapons. But scientists had earlier found a different application, using the radioactive particles to accurately date the planet. In 1911, a gifted 21-year-old geology student, Arthur Holmes, used radiation to revolutionize our understanding of Earth history. After Holmes, geologists would talk in billions, not millions of years. Radiometric dating was simple in principle. It was based on the discovery that traces of the radioactive element uranium found throughout the rocks of the Earth decayed into another element, lead. Like sand trickling through an hourglass over hundreds of millions of years and at a steady rate, a sample of radioactive uranium will decay to lead. By measuring the proportion of uranium to lead in crystals trapped in ancient rocks, Holmes could accurately calculate their ages. Collecting data from samples from all over the world would be a lifetime's work. But as Holmes grew older, so did the Earth. Its calculated age extended first to one, then three, then finally to 4.5 billion years. Today, 4.5 billion years is still the accepted age for the Earth. Time on this incredible scale is known to those in the business as deep time. It's difficult to imagine how vast deep time is, but think of it this way. That's a grain of sand. If it represented a year, then the length of my finger would be equivalent to the whole of my lifetime. From the tip of my finger to my elbow would take us back to the Pilgrim Fathers. From here to the rocky island you see on the horizon would take us back to the age of the dinosaurs. And if we were to turn around and go to the equator, then it would be equivalent to going back to the beginning of the Earth, four and a half billion years ago. The search for the age of the Earth was over, and the results had opened a window on the past. For the first time, scientists could put rocks in the correct order, look deep into the Earth's past, and tell its story. They would discover evidence of an epic journey with many twists and turns. But the most significant step may well have been taken within just a few hundred million years of its birth when the planet became a water world.